All right, so today we're going to talk about the Omnibus F3 all-in-one V1.1 flight controller and maybe other Omnibus models and some weird behavior you might experience when trying to connect with a PWM or a PPM signal to this flight control board. When I first received this board, I think it's, it's an inexpensive board. I first got it for iNav. It had a PPM uh, receiver. It was a Redcon. Uh, I have a Spectrum transmitter. Uh, they worked great. Uh, they have uh, great range, too, I find. Anyways, uh, connected up. Wasn't working. Uh, started messing around with it. Where you connect is where it shows to the PPM RX3 5 volt and ground connector here right before any of the motor outputs. Uh, you can see here it can take either SBUS or PPM. There's two resistors here. Now I saw some information out there that you might have to uh, solder one resistor out or something of that nature. I wasn't hyped to jump on and do that so I started nutsing around with some of the settings. And if you go into beta flight uh, and you go into your ports tab, what I had to do to get it to work is, which is very odd, is I had to enable Serial RX on the UART for the PPM. You can see this is RX, uh, RX3, which is UART3. That's very odd because uh, it's a PPM signal, so whatever, it worked. And then the rest of it was pretty straightforward. Go to the Configuration tab, and then your receiver settings is PPM RX input. And as you can see, if I go into the receivers tab, and then I have full control here, and I have all uh, six channels. So for my spectrum, the channels that aux one and aux three are on the gear and flaps tabs or switches. So this is the aux one is the gear switch, and the flap switch is aux three. And a link to a video, I did another video on the DX6i uh, of how you can turn those two flap switches into multiple positions. So instead of a, just a two position switch, you'll see here, I'll go through a couple of these. So this is when I'm armed, and then I have, if I flip my dual rate aileron switch, it falls to another position, which the reason it switched both is because I, I have that as a fail safe test uh, mode, so that's why it flipped all the receivers to that. Same thing with my flaps. I have one position down is the flat is, you know, takes a signal all the way up to 2000 microseconds. Then if I take that, if I take my elevator dual rate down, it moves it back down to midway or around. And then if I push my flap switch all the way up, then it takes it down a little bit farther. So I'll link to that video on the upper right. And that uh, shows you how you can use the two mixes on the transmitter to accomplish that. So essentially you're turning uh, two two position switches into a bunch. Uh, I guess it would be one, two, uh, three, four, five positions if I'm counting them up right here in my head. But uh, one thing you could see that I on my aux one I changed that uh, two position switch into three positions but I could not figure out how to get that into a four position switch. I didn't mess with it too much but that might not be available, but the, the flap switch that you could see it had multiple depending on what are up and down. So check out that video if you're interested in that. The other thing to note with PPM receivers is that when you first connect your PPM or PWM receiver to a flight control board, if you, uh, one thing that you want to do is take your throttle and go up to mid range on it, make sure your sticks are centered. And also check your endpoints. So if you're connecting everything and you think it should work, uh, one thing that could be catching you off guard is if you see here, if I flip this into failsafe mode and I move my sticks around now, they're not moving. Um, well, actually, my throttle is moving, but uh, my other sticks, if I'm, you know, trust me, I'm moving the pitch air and roll around and they're not moving. So you want to pay attention up here. What's essentially going on that could throw you off? is that if your transmitter is sending signals you know, higher or lower than what is set in the thresholds here for failsafe, 
it will trigger a fail safe automatically, which will then set these to auto, which will basically mean they're going to center. So either you know you can take you can set these to zero and ten thousand. They'll go to their they, don't, they you can't actually set it. I think it goes down to seven fifty or something like that, and this will go up to a higher range. I don't know what it is, but um, and just you know look out for that as well. Uh, I'm not sure if this indicator will mark up here because the only reason that's doing that now is because technically I have the arm switch up. So if I go into my modes, I don't I don't think that that just looking for this uh, fail safe light to light up is going to uh, be um, enough of an indicator. And you can see that's it's doing this now because I have this triggered to fail safe. So you can see you can get quite a bit of uh, things going on here uh, just with a simple six position or six channel. Uh, transmitter or radio. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks, and I hope this helps.